señores nacionales, señores. Para mí fue un honor. Uh, the president of the United States is in South Korea right now. I had a meeting with uh, the, the Russian leader Medvedev, and, uh, and he was heard with an open mic. It's always dangerous for these politicians or leaders to be talking near an open mic. He was heard saying this to Medvedev, the Russian president. Listen to this. This is my last question. Yeah, I understand. After my election, I have more questions. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I transmit this information to Vladimir and Alexander. All right, in case you didn't hear it, this is my last election. After my election, I have more flexibility. That, that is a factual statement that the president is making. If he doesn't have to worry about getting reelected, he doesn't have to worry so much about domestic politics. Is there anything wrong in, uh, when it comes to national security issues to be saying something like that to the Russian leader? And if he's planning on doing more and suggest to Russia that, that he has things he's willing to do with them, he's not willing to tell the American people. This is to Russia. That This is... Without question, our number one geopolitical foe, they, they fight every uh, uh, cause for the world's worst actors. The, the idea that he has some more flexibility in mind for Russia is very, very troubling indeed. Uh, Governor Romney, I'm glad that you recognize that al-Qaeda is a threat. Because a few months ago, when you were asked what's the biggest geopolitical threat facing America, you said Russia. Not al-Qaeda, you said Russia. In the 1980s or now, calling to ask for their foreign policy back. Because you know, the Cold War has been over for 20 years. Sarah Palin taking aim at your decision to restrict uh, use of nuclear weapons, uh, your pledge not to strike nations, non-nuclear nations, uh, who abide by the non-proliferation treaty. Here's what she said. She said it's unbelievable. No other administration would do it. And then she likened it to kids on a playground. She said you're like a kid who says, punch me in the face and I'm not going to retaliate. Yeah. Your response? Uh, I really have no response to that. The last I checked, Sarah Palin's not much of an expert on uh, nuclear uh, issues. After the Russian army invaded the nation of Georgia, Senator Obama's reaction was one of indecision and moral equivalence, the kind of response that would only encourage Russia's Putin to invade Ukraine next. A Fox News alert. Crisis in Ukraine. Russian troops roar into the country, blocking roads and airports. And this morning, new reports that they are seizing control of missile bases. The latest on the tent situation straight ahead. So the president, though, had this hastily called press conference that lasted only a few minutes and kind of came out there and warned, warned Vladimir Putin that, look, if you do anything, if you do anything, there's going to be consequences. And indeed... The United States will stand with the international community in affirming that there will be costs for any military intervention in Ukraine. I don't quite know what those consequences are yet. Well, it's because it's odd because don't go in there, but they're already in there. Right. I mean, I'm warning you don't go in there, but they're already in there. And this Charles Krauthammer had this to say. The Ukrainians, and I think everybody, is shocked by the weakness of Obama's statement. It is... I find it rather staggering, and the fact that we have done nothing of any importance. What he's saying is we're not really going to do anything. It's a code, and it tells Europeans and others how serious we are and how much we want to, to carry it through. You could not have issued a more flaccid statement than what Obama did. The world sees this, and it knows, as, uh, as we just heard, they can tell if a president cares, and if he doesn't, they won't care, because unless you're led by the superpower, you will not go. This, I think, says it all. Front page of the Daily News this morning, not exactly uh, an anti-Obama newspaper, Obama's red line, and at the bottom, President's threat rings hollow again. That's a red line for us. We have sent a, uh, an unmistakable message that uh, this would cross a red line. That's a red line for us. The president's use of the term red line was deliberate and was based on U.S. policy. I didn't set a red line. Yes, you did. I didn't set a red line. Yes, you did. I didn't set a red line. Yes, you did. We've been here before. Because there is Syria. no line. There is yeah. no line this time. There right. is no red line. I mean, they're already in there. So, so I've, di I've just never understood the president's PR people. Well, when meanwhile. a crisis like this happens, you don't go to a happy hour. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So meanwhile, across town, President Obama goes to a Democratic National uh, uh, Committee meeting, essentially, and he's with, with the Democrats slamming the GOP and uh, saying, hey, kind of like Jimmy Buffett, it's 5 o'clock somewhere.
The situation overseas not stopping the president from hitting happy hour. It's Friday. It's after five o'clock. So this is now officially happy hour with the Democratic Party. Uh, when a crisis like this happens, you don't go to a happy hour. We are now deeply concerned by reports of military movements taken by the Russian Federation. So this is now officially happy hour with the Democratic Party. We are now deeply concerned. So this is now officially happy hour. We are now deeply concerned. So this is now officially happy hour. Turn up the trouble, 